Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Skyan. Okay, it looks like most of us are, are uh, there with our terms copied down. I'm going to give you guys two minutes to independently review these terms from your lecture notes or your reference sheet. So all of these, uh, abolitionism isn't on yesterday's uh, lecture notes, but we know what abolitionism is. Um, so take two minutes with your lecture notes to review these key terms. Two minutes, go ahead and get started. You just need to copy down what's on the board. One more minute to copy down the terms. Thirty more seconds to review the terms. Okay, that is two minutes. What are the confiscation acts? Shakim, can you unmute and share? Confiscation acts in army to take. Um, I think it was the slave from the South and the army. And Shakim, can you remind me what year the confiscation acts were? written? When were they what? When were they written? Yeah, do you have the year that those were put into place? In 1861. Awesome. Yes, 1861 and 1862. What is the Emancipation Proclamation, Shaquasia? I could look for it. Yeah, do you have it? No, I don't know. Okay. What is the Emancipation Proclamation? Uh, Giovanni, can you unmute and share? Um, it was written in 1863 and all slaves mm -hmm. and states of rebellion. Yes. Yes, it was published in 1863 and it freed states, uh, freed slaves and states in rebellion. And that is what we are going to be zooming in on today. So go ahead and take five minutes. You're going to do page one of your classwork. Utilizing these notes. So 
On page one of your classwork, you have five minutes to complete the do now. Go ahead and get started. Five minutes. If your camera is off, if you can please take 30 seconds to get yourselves set up so you can have your camera on, I would really appreciate that. Four minutes and 40 seconds left on the do now. Three more minutes on the do now. Ninety more seconds to finish up the do now. Thirty more seconds to finish up.
that is five minutes. So looking at the do now, what is happening in 1862? Please in the Zoom chat, what is happening in 1862? Which of our word wall key terms was going on? in 1862. 1862, which key term did we have, uh, did we review after everything? Thank you, Skyann. Thank you, Shakim. Yes, the confiscation acts. And to remind ourselves from what uh, Shaquem told us earlier, confiscation acts are when the US uh, United States Union military were able to uh, take self-emancipated peoples and they told the South, if you're gonna call these people property, then we get to take it the same way we could take any other property. And so, <clears throat> Because of the confiscation acts, you get a lot of um, enslaved people going to union, um, going to union army barracks, and finding that as a place of refuge. So that is what is happening before Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation. And as we discussed yesterday, the Emancipation Proclamation does a lot and very little all at the same time. It frees enslaved people in, uh, in rebellion states, which he doesn't really have any power of, but it also creates the United States Color Troops, which is a uh, division of the military that is uh, purely African-American, which, and they were not, freedmen of the North were not able to join the, uh, the army before that. So the Emancipation Proclamation has a lot of complicating factors. So today we're gonna to zoom in on those and try to figure out why would Lincoln sign the Emancipation Proclamation? So we're gonna go ahead and transition to our document analysis on page three of your class packet. I'll give us 30 seconds to get there, page three. In your source line annotations, make sure you're focusing on the bias that the author might have and what else is happening in the time period. So for example, the first document is from 1861 and we just said that the confiscation acts were signed in 1861 and 1862. So that would be something super important to include in that source line. So make sure you're identifying relevant outside evidence and your uh, author's bias. You're gonna have 12, uh, 12 minutes in total to read these three documents, but I will pause you periodically to uh, find out what annotations you're coming up with. So 12 minutes in total, be prepared to respond if I pause us. Go ahead and get started. 12 minutes, start on document number one. Just gonna pause this really quick. I realize that we might not know who Benjamin Butler is. Benjamin Butler is a union general. So in your source line annotations, make sure you have that he is a general for the North. So again, document one, source line annotations, write that he is a Northern general. Okay, you have 11 minutes and 20 seconds. Go ahead and keep going.
Okay, we're gonna pause there. You have nine minutes left. Looking at document one into the Zoom chat, tell me, what does document one sound like? Which of our key terms do you think document one is discussing? Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for responding. Please remember to respond. Uh, engagement in the Zoom chat does affect your participation grade. Awesome. I'm seeing some from several people that this is reminding them of the confiscation acts. So document one shows us what the union um, military is dealing with in terms of like how do we approach enslaved people during this war. So now we're going to zoom in and look at and see some of the reactions or reasons for the Emancipation Proclamation. You have nine minutes to finish your annotations. Go ahead and get started. I'm seeing some awesome work in your guys' documents on Google Classroom. You have seven more minutes. You should be on document two if you have not gotten there yet. If you have not gotten there yet, transition to document two. You have six and a half minutes left.
You have five minutes to finish up your annotations, five minutes. Three more minutes, and then we're gonna come back together for discourse. Three more minutes, we should be on document three. You have one more minute to finish up and then we'll come back for discourse. Thirty seconds to finish up. Okay, that is time for annotations. In the Zoom chat, 
according to these documents, why did Abraham Lincoln pass the Emancipation Proclamation? Take two minutes to stop and jot into the Zoom chat. So again, take two minutes to chat your response. Do not press send until I tell you to do so. So take the full two minutes to craft your response. I will be going through these responses at the end of the class period and putting in a grade on um, the Zoom engagement tracker. So I should have 13 responses in the Zoom chat. There are 13 of you. So two minutes to respond to the discourse question. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see it projected. There we go. So why did Lincoln issue the Emancipation Proclamation? Two minutes in the Zoom chat, do not press send until I tell you to do so. Go ahead and get started. Two minutes to respond to that discourse question. One more minute. Remember, do not press send until I tell you to do so. Ten more seconds to finish up. Go ahead and press send. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for your responses. Waiting on a few more. Okay, can I hear from, can I hear from Leah, then Alexis, and then Kamaya. So Leah, Alexis, Kamaya. Um, I said that he, wait, hold on. I said to free all the slave states and the Confederate states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, and, sorry, go ahead and build on that, Alexis. He explains how he is an anti, um, he's an anti-slavery and how he was wrong and needs to pay the price and how they should try and save the union. Mm -hmm. And Kamaya. I said, um, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation due to the Confiscation Act and conditions and endangerment of Blacks in addition to him being anti-slavery, also 
Those promised that they'd earn their freedom and fighting with the Union, yet the Union was still hesitant to grant them their freedom, which is unjust, and slavery is also wrongful to God. Awesome. So in those responses, I'm hearing two main reasons why Lincoln would pass the Emancipation Proclamation. What do you think are the two main reasons he decided to pass the Emancipation Proclamation? Go ahead and share it with me in the chat. What do we think are the two bucket or main reasons? You can go and type out and share in the chat. Thank you, Shaquasia, Kayla, and Leah for starting us out. Thank you, Kamaya. Thank you, Shaquem. Thank you, Sierra. So again, in the chat, what are the two reasons? Awesome. Thank you, Sky, and thank you, Sierra. So there are two main reasons. The first, it had a tactical advantage from what I'm seeing in the chat. We agree that it gives the union a better chance of victory. So he does it because he wants a military victory in the Civil War. And then the second, which we talk about in document two, is that Lincoln is anti-slavery. So make sure you have that written down in your discourse notes, the two reasons. He wants the union to be able to win the, to win the Civil War. And two, he is anti-slavery. So again, in those discourse notes, those are two reasons. He wants the union to be able to win the war and he is anti-slavery. I'll say that one more time. It gives a military advantage for the union victory and he wants slavery to be over. He wants to end slavery. Before we go to our exit ticket, I am going to show you guys a new strategy to, to writing your body paragraphs specifically um, in your exit tickets, something that a trend that I've noticed is that we've had issues writing a full paragraph. So I'm going to give you a three sentence formula or setup to where you can write this more effectively. So in the case that you need evidence from one document, your body paragraphs should be three sentences. And on the screen, you'll see the format that we are going to use. There's also a spot on the very last page of your class notes to write this down. So when you write a body paragraph, the first thing you should do is claim it. I'll tell you what that means after you write it down. So the first thing you should do is claim it. And what that means is that you are claiming or making your argument. So your claim it, is your thesis or your topic sentence. So again, when you claim it, that is the, your answer to the question, it is your thesis or your topic sentence. So why did Abraham Lincoln issue the Emancipation Proclamation? Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation because he wanted to free the slaves and end the Civil War. That's a thesis, that's a topic sentence. The next thing that you're gonna do is explain it. What do I mean by explain it? Explain it means find evidence. Show evidence that explains why you have that answer. So explaining it in this example 
would be pulling from documents one, two, or three, a piece of evidence that supports my thesis. So I might say, according to document two, Lincoln thinks slavery is evil and that's why he wanted to end it. Very simple. So we have our claimant, which are, So we have our claim it, which is our thesis or our answer to the question. Our explain it is our piece of evidence. In most of our body paragraphs for class, you only need one piece of evidence, but in your DBQ, you're gonna wanna use uh, two pieces of uh, evidence from two different documents. So it depends on what you're writing. In that case, those body paragraphs would be like four sentences. But for today, you're just gonna need one, one evidence for explain it. So again, explain it, one piece of evidence that backs up or explains your answer. And finally, the last sentence that you wanna do is your connected sentence, that connected sentence. And what I mean by connected is you show me how your thesis backs up your argument. I mean, how your evidence backs up your thesis. So by connecting it, I would say something like, this shows that, and I would, ex I would explain how that evidence supports my document. I mean, it supports my thesis. So claim it is our thesis, explain it is our evidence, connect it is our line of reasoning or explaining how that evidence supports our thesis. So, I am going to send you guys to your exit ticket. You're going to have a body paragraph response to what we discussed today. Make sure I, when I grade them, each of these is going to be worth a point. So your thesis is one point, your evidence is one point, and how that supports it is your last point. So make sure you claim it, explain it, connect it, and I will give you guys feedback on, uh, on how well we do this when I grade these uh, tomorrow or Thursday. So go ahead and head off to your exit tickets. Make sure you do these three things. And once you submit your classwork and your exit ticket, you will be free to go. Please chat me if you have any questions. Mahmoud, you're free to go.